Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hope all is well. Hope everything's all right. All right. Thank you. Everybody's there now. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hope everybody's doing all right. So I uh, appreciate you uh, tuning in for this intro meeting for your uh, statistics class, online statistics class. So when it comes to uh, communications, I will always be emailing you guys as far as to communicate on, on, on communicating. Um, uh, but all of our communications, uh, as far as the class is concerned, will be archived in Canvas, in your Canvas announcements. So if you ever go to your Canvas announcements, and you, uh, that's where you see all of my emails. If you're ever concerned about if I have emailed the whole class, I will always archive our emails there. So, um, or if you miss your emails, misplace your emails, it will always be here. So, you know, our first email, you guys have received uh, five all together. Our first one was just that you guys know it was an online class and how we're going to be operating in re with regards to that. You know, we're just doing, uh, do your work on your own time. And the second one was that you guys know about this optional meeting, gave you the Zoom link, and that's why you guys are here today. And then the next one was talking about Math Lab Access. We have a computer component that we will be using uh, called Math Lab. And a lot of you are already registered, so that's great. And so this is just an email showing you guys how to register and uh, to go ahead and get in there. Uh, so you go to mathlab.com, hit register, and use this course ID from there. Uh, once you've done that part, you would actually have to input your access code if you've already purchased um, access from another site or outside source, like you know the bookstore or something like that, maybe even a friend, Amazon. Or um, you can purchase access through the website itself. Uh, if you do that, they won't give you access code. They will just give you access. And if you're not ready to purchase, you would then use the 14-day free pass. The way the 14-day free, 14 free pass work is that uh, you get full access for 14 days. After the 14 days, they will lock you out. And uh, you won't lose your progress. You just won't have access to it at the moment. I will still be able to see it. Uh, you won't until you actually pay the 14 days. Once you pay the 14 days, then they will give you your access back and you'll be able to continue on uh, doing your work. All right. Uh, any questions on either one of those emails up to this point? Everybody good? Everybody straight? Anybody? All right. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to either unmute or type in the chat. So the next one, is uh, Math Lab specifics, how we're going to actually um, use Math Lab in this course. And the first thing of note is just a reminder for me to remind you guys that Math Lab does not work well with Safari. Um, so use Chrome or Firefox. Uh, both of those apps are free. So you can just download them um, and then use them. But if you use an Apple product and use the internet, the go to for Apple products is Safari. Once again, Math Lab does not interface well with it. So sometimes it'll um, you know, come up, sometimes it won't, sometimes it'll show part of the problem. You know, it just does not interface well with Safari. So uh use Chrome or Firefox for your internet browser. All right. So get into the details of Math Lab and how we're going to use it though. You cannot pass the class without access to Pearson's Math Lab. There's no way to do it because all of our assignments, all of our tests will be generated through Math Lab. So you must uh, participate and show activity in Math Lab Weekly, not daily. You don't have to do it daily, even though it would be to your benefit to get in there more than once a week. I'm not requiring that you uh, get in there daily, but you do want to get in there weekly to uh, solidify your attendance. Um, if you're having any issues with Math Lab or attendance period, just anything, make sure you keep lines of communications open. Make sure you email me, let me know what's going on, see if anything I can do to help you out you know, along those lines. Um, when it comes to homework, you have unlimited amount of tries to get the best grade possible. Um, and then from there, we're talking about uh, if is uh, if I give you unlimited amount of tries to get the best grade possible, there's no such thing as unlimited amount of problems. So I know that uh, if you wanted to, you could play the click game, which you click on stuff until you get the problem that you just been working on, which you had to answer and all this stuff like that. So I've seen people do it before, in which they get hundreds on every single thing. But then when you get to the test, you only get 20s on it or something like that. So make sure you take advantage of doing your work properly. Um, you don't want to uh, take advantage of the idea that I have unlimited attempts. 
uh, and not use unlimited attempts to your benefit. You know, sometimes we can do things to our detriment, but do it to your benefit. So with that being said, the lowest score I'm looking at for homework is at least a 75. Because uh, like I said, you get unlimited amount of tries to get the best grade possible. And 75 to 84.9, I will take it up to a 90% in my book. And then I would like to push you to at least an 85, though, if you want to get full 100% uh, score, at least an 85 on your homework. And then I would turn that to an 100% in my grade book. Um, your test reviews are not mandatory, but if you score at least 85 or better, then five points will be added to that respective test. All right. For your test, you get two attempts to get the best grade possible. Um, and for your test also, whatever the grade is, that's what you get. So if you get a 75 on your test, then it is a 75. It's just your homework that if you get a 75, I will bump it up to a 90. And then this last statement um, about um, emailing me a copy of the scratch work, that's just a general statement I put in all my classes. This class wouldn't have much scratch work. So if you don't have much, the same problem. Uh, you're in a good place. It's not that big a deal. It's just that my other classes, like once this is my pre-calc, calculus and stuff like that, they do have scratch work. So it's just a general statement. I send to all my classes. All right. Questions on any of that? Any questions? Anybody do it? All right. And then the last email that I sent you guys, it's just a copy of all of my lectures. You know, all of my YouTube links. And so if you have any questions on anything, um, I do check out lectures always so if you let me know. Um, but those are all the lectures that you would get if you were in person. Uh, same screen, same content, same guy. Uh, just that that's a previously recorded class. All right. So uh, before I go into Math Lab, show you how that works. Any questions? Everybody good and rest All right. So going into your shell. All right, so you see your syllabus is right here. And so everything that we do is going to be in Math Lab. I, anything that you need is going to be in Math Lab. Like I said, the only thing that I use Canvas for is to archive your emails because I can't do it in Math Lab. And so everything I do, I want to push you into Math Lab because you can't get anything done unless you get into Math Lab. So yeah, everything you need, everything you want to do, all your grades, I'm not transferring grades to Canvas because I want you to focus on Math Lab. There's nothing in Canvas that's gonna benefit you because everything you need is in Math Lab. Um, your due dates in Math Lab, your grades in Math Lab, uh, any assignments, tests, everything we do will be in Math Lab. When we do our midterm, when we do our final exam, all those things will be in Math Lab. Uh, when we look at our midterm and final exam, um, you know, and I'm gonna send you more details on that as we get closer to it. You know, you will log on to Zoom, make sure you enable your camera, show your ID, and then I will give you the password to do your exam right there at that moment. You know, you're going to do it during the confines of that time. And, uh, so uh, you wouldn't have to come into school. You know, it will be just done through Zoom. All right. So your assignments are right here. And so, oh, somebody said something in chat. Where are you? Um, I have, uh, I walked through problems in the lectures, but if there, if you go through the homework and you have a question about anything, what you can do is send me that question and I can walk, I can create a video for you and walk through that type of problem or that specific problem. Um, so that's normally what I do is just offer that as an option. Like if you, if you come across a problem and you want to see something like it done or that done, then I will just make a video for you personally. So you just email me with that type of situation. Other than that, um, you know, office hours are always available um, as well. I just haven't sent the office hours out yet, um, but they are in the syllabus. Uh, I just haven't sent the Zoom links for those office hours. But these are office hours right here. And then if you can't make those or if you need something else, then like I said right here, other time options can be made by request. So um, I don't have any extra videos for that but if you want something extra made i can make it for you so it's not a big deal yep. so 
So, and for those who uh, will be watching this video later, one of your classmates to ask about extra uh, videos of other problems and stuff like that, or extra uh, things that you can look at, you know, based on other problems. So um, that's what I would recommend. Like okay, so uh, when you look at all your assignments, everything's open, all the assignments from beginning to end. Uh, you see you have four tests. Now the first test, I did not, I did not do a test review because all basically uh, definitions. So once you do your homework and you do your definitions right here, you pretty much have the answer. So uh, that's why I didn't put a test review right there because you know it's just uh, you just got the answer and you already get two shots at the test. So uh, it didn't make sense for me to do a test review there when you're getting all the information and all the answers right there in front of you. Um, but test reviews are for the rest of them. And so it's a block of homework, test review, and then you test. Also, you see you got your midterm review right here. And your final exam review right here, if you want to take a look at those. Uh, but yep, so what's going to happen is, I haven't mapped it out yet, but in eight weeks, uh, we'll be looking at doing our midterm. And so I'm going to change chapters one, two, three, and four. You see your midterm is on chapters one through four. Um, all our dates will be set for your midterm. And then from there, the other dates will be set for your final final exam. So I only have two due dates. That's your midterm and then your final exam. So halfway through and then at the end of the semester. Uh, those are the two dates you'll be looking for. If by some chance uh, we get to the midterm and you not don't get everything done, then you are able to ask for an extension. Uh, I don't have a problem with you doing so. But um, those are the only two dates that we're looking at, midterm and then final, final grading. So, uh, so within that time, it's on you to start, you know, manage your time wisely and get your things done within that that, that scope of time. All right. So, um, the next thing that uh, the main, the first thing I, should, I will be looking at from you guys or looking for are your definitions. We have chapter one definitions here, chapter two definitions here. Chapter one is just one. Uh, is multiple pages. Chapter two is just one page. And basically, when you look at these definitions. It wasn't something made to be hard. It's just a, a, an assignment to help familiarize you guys with the terms and the type of that type of uh, that type of terminology you will be seeing and the type of words you'll be seeing in your statistics. All of these are in the textbook. Um, so you have the e-text right here, and okay, they move it. Uh, okay, they will be chapter contents. So e-text contents, and if you go to chapter one. Click on oh, right here, one now. And then hit the text. Take you to the first page. And you can do that for any section, of course. You know, you can go to the contents and hit that section that you're trying to go to. Make it take, take a while to load depending on your Wi Fi. I'm at the school right now. All right. So if you go back to your definitions, all right. So if you see here, what are statistics? What is data? What is population? What is an individual? So when you go to your definitions, statistics is the first definition right there. Data is right here. That's the second one. So it's all in order. It wasn't made to be a scavenger hunt. It wasn't made to be something difficult to do. It just wants, again, to familiarize you guys with the terms and the tech and uh, the type of values you will be, uh, I keep saying values, type of words you will be seeing as you go throughout the course, like a population, individual sample. All of them are in order. Most of them are in boxes, or they may be bolded in the text, but most of them are in boxes. And you will just uh, write down your definitions. And once you've done so, you can turn them in either as a Word document or if you wrote them in your, your um, notebook, take the picture and um, email them to me, scan them, whichever way you want to do them. But uh, yeah, that's what your first assignment is. And it's based on your textbook. So don't go to you know Google or Alexa or anything or go to you know websites to look them up. They're all in your text, and they may even give you different definitions outside of this text than what's in this text. And remember, you want to use the textbook 
uh, definition because that's going to help you in your homework and for your first test. So make sure you lean on the textbook. All right. Questions on that. And as soon as you get that to me, then I will manually put your grade into MATLAB. All right, questions are very good. Let's make sure. All right, and then one more thing. Pull up my sign. Okay. All right, so here is what the assignment would look like generally. Um, so down bottom, you have your help tools. Help me solve this. You wouldn't click on help me solve this unless you are um, frustrated with the problem, completely done with it. Because if you help me solve it, click on help me solve this, it will help you solve it. And then that's it. Uh, you'll mark it wrong because they, they just walk you through the actual problem. And then they'll reset it for you to actually do it on your own. So most people would like to do view an example. When you hit view an example, it'll walk you step by step of another problem that's very similar to the one you're looking at, just different numbers. And then from there, they give you all the steps. And um, some people like to print it and stuff like that. You can if you like, it's up to you. And then it's, so they walk you through everything. And then they send you back to the problem. So let's say if I do this, they actually you check it. They'll try to give you a hint. Okay. And so tell you what the right answer is and tell you what your answer is. And I'm just writing in anything so you can uh, get to the problem. All right, so once you've gotten it incorrect, uh, or if you didn't get the whole thing correct, they will ask you, do you want to do some of the question or hit the next question? So if you don't hit some of the question at that moment, then you get some of the question down here and that will reset the problem. And the same problem, same process, just different numbers. And so now you apply the process there. So uh, until you get it right, it will have a red X by the problem. If you go to the list, you'll see a red X. Once you get it right, it will turn into a green check and give you full credit. If you got part of it right, part of it wrong, it will have a green check slash red X. All right. Um, the other tools right here. Uh, if you want more help, depending on the complexity of the problem, there may be another video here from a Pearson instructor. Uh, sometimes they have an animation video. Uh, if you click on textbook, it will send you to the place in the textbook where they discuss this problem. Stat Crunch is a um, math lab version of Excel. You can use it, uh, learn how to use it uh, if you like. I don't require it because if you go through the lectures, you'll see that I'll tell you other options that you can use. Um, uh, like just basically an app or a website on your own. You don't necessarily have to lean on math labs technology. But if you decide to, you have a question about it, feel free to ask. Tech help is just, um, you know, they're tech people. You can ask them for help as well. And then ask my instructor will send me an email uh, regarding this problem. Just let me know you have a problem with this problem. Now, if you send me an email through this and by some chance I don't uh, respond, just know that I'm not purposely trying to ignore emails. I may have... Um, missed it in the realm of all the other emails I get, or it's possible that sometimes they don't interface like they should. I've had people before say I did ask my instructor and I didn't get it. So sometimes it happens, not all the time. So always feel free to uh, email me again the regular way, whether it be through my just direct email, vtucker at uh, tcc.edu, tcc or just through Canvas. I get that as well if you email me through Canvas. Um, and, um, or come to an office hour. And uh, most definitely make sure that your question gets answered. Um, questions, concerns, comments, or anything? Anybody? I think, is there anything else? All uh, those definitions, you want to get them to me as soon as possible. Um, if I had to put a date on it to say that you're on task, I would say 9-7. You want to get it to me by September 7th? Uh, and I'll put that in the email. 
when I email this out, you know, for those who are um, uh, not on right now, we want to review this. Uh, I'll put that in the email as well. Uh, so, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. So, I think that is pretty much it. Uh, I just wanted to touch bases with you guys, let you know how things are going to be ran, how we're going to use Math Lab, see if you have any questions, so you can ask them uh, live versus through email. And, uh, yeah. So any questions before we close out? Anything you about? Okay, if you don't have any questions, oh, that's somebody in chat. Okay, cool, you're saying thank you, okay. Yep, so good, that's good. I'm glad I explained it um, well enough. Uh, so if you have any questions that may um, pop up later on, feel free to email me, it's not a big deal. I'll answer you as soon as I get to it. And then from there, we just, Gonna have a great semester. So uh, always make sure you pay attention to your emails because I will touch bases with you. Um, you know, every now and then just checking in, seeing if anybody has any questions, reminding you down here if you need me. Um, and then we'll go from there. So you guys have a good one. Be safe, and I will see you around.